Hey guys, it's me. Um, today I'm going to walk you through the first exercise in the learning pathways for Onshape. This is gonna be the basic sketching um, tutorial. So let's get started. Um, you can see in the exercise here, this is the exercise that shows up on the Onshape learning pathway. And so uh, I'm just gonna walk through this uh, and you can kind of see how I went ahead and did that. So the first step here, it tells me to create a new document and make sure that my work shape or that my workspace um, units are set to millimeters. So switch back to my onscape, on shape, uh, hit create uh, document. I'm gonna call this basic sketching. And then once I get inside here, the very first thing I'm going to do is come up to here to the document menu. I'm going to set my workspace units to, um, so the default length unit is set to millimeters. Okay, and then if I look back in the instructions, um, it tells me to begin a new sketch on the top plane. So I'll come over here um, and I will create a new sketch. And I want to put that sketch on the top plane. And you can see that that sketch is created there. Now I want to look down uh, directly on top of that sketch. And I'd also like to get rid of these orthogonal planes here. So I'm going to do a couple things here on my video screen. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just simply type P on the keyboard. And that will hide all of those planes. And I can just toggle that on and off just by pressing P. And then the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my visualization cube here and I'm going to choose the top plane and I'll just simply orient the top plane. Um, so we're looking down on that plane. Okay. Um, so now we're on to step two. Step two asks me to go ahead and draw uh, this general shape. So I'll use the drawing tools, the circle and the line and the construction um, tool here to do that. So I've got a couple of concentric circles that I'm going to create. Um, I'm going to make sure that I place those circles right at the center of my sketch plane. Um, that's not really required, but it'll help me out um, as I go forward here. Uh, so let's start by doing that. Switch back to my design. I'm going to come up here and choose the circle. And to get that circle right in there, I'm just going to hover over it. You see it kind of highlights with an orange. And so I'll just put it on there and kind of drag it out. I'm not sure how big that's supposed to be, but I'll just kind of make it about that size. I'll put another circle um, right on that same spot. Make it kind of look like that. And then uh, I'll go ahead and um, create the construction line here coming out of the center of it. So I'm going to switch to my line tool. Then I'm going to switch here to construction. And this will make that dashed line that shows up there. And so I'm just gonna drag this straight out. And you can see that as I get to um, a horizontal position, I get that little, that little horizontal line show up um, down here off to the right of my cursor. Uh, that tells me that that line is, is horizontal and that it's gonna apply that horizontal constraint to that line. So if I try to move that line, it'll always keep it horizontal. So I'll just kind of throw that in there. And then I'm going to go back and create the rest of my sketch. So um, I'm going to come off the bottom of this, kind of make this shape across here, and then come across back to the top of the circle. And so I'll start my line command, kind of come down here. I want it to be lined up with the, with the bottom of this. So I'm going to kind of drag over this and see if I can get it to, to line up with that. And I'm not drawing my line. Let's try that again. Start my line command. There you go. Now you see as I as I get um, over that, you see it kind of highlights that center point and tells me it's going to line that up exactly with that. Uh, you see the two constraints show up to the bottom right of that. It's a perpendicular constraint. It's a perpendicular to the construction line, and it's also going to be a vertical line. So I'll click that. I'm going to drag around here. I'm using my wheel on my mouse to um, to pan. Uh, so I'm pushing that down and panning. And so I'll kind of come over here, make another point, 
uh, another point here. And I want to line this up, so I'm going to kind of hover over this, and drag down off of it, and it'll show me when I'm kind of lined up with that. So I'll do that. Come over about maybe around here. Somewhere over there. Back over here. And then I'll line that last point up. And then when I'm all done, I'll just hit escape. And go back and look at the design here. So mine looks different than this. There's some similarity, obviously, but it's not exact. So in the next um, few slides here, we'll go through and uh, show how to um, apply constraints and then how to kind of, uh, make that look exactly the shape and size that we want it to. So I'm going to move to step three now. And so this is the part where you're going to be applying some constraints. And the constraints are really a, a neat feature of Onshape. Um, they allow you to kind of say, well, this part right here, this piece right here, this piece right here, and this piece right here, I always want those to be the same length. So we're going to go through there and assign those an equal constraint. And that way, if I change the size of one of the lines, all of the lines will change as well. Um, the other thing we've got here is a midpoint constraint. We want the midpoint of this line segment right here to line up right on that construction line. So we'll go ahead and, and create that as well. I'll switch back to my sketch here. And you can see my constraints are up here along the top. And so I can, um, I can add those and change those as I need to. Um, the first thing let's do, let's do a couple of things. First of all, let's make sure that all the horizontal lines are actually horizontal. So this one is a little off. And so I'm gonna make that line horizontal. And you can see that that kind of lines up there. Um, and so that looks pretty good. Um, I, I wanna make this line, this line, and this line all equal length. And so I'm gonna choose the equal length and I'm gonna pick these two. So that will make those two the same length. And then I'll pick these two and it will make those two the same length. And you see how everything kind of adjusted there as I did that. Um, it's using the fact that these are horizontal lines. It's using the fact that they're to the top and it's using the fact that all these are equal length in order to adjust the size of those circles there. Okay. Um, I also wanna make this the midpoint here. And so I'll go up here and choose the midpoint constraint and I'll make sure that um, midpoint is applied to that. Let's see if I've got that or not. I think I've got that, but I'm not sure. Oh, if I come up here and choose show constraints, it'll show me what those are. And so there you can see that midpoint constraint um, is showing up on there. So I can see that that's, um, that that's located the, the, in the place that I want. Okay, let's move on to the next step here. So again, my model looks a little bit different, in it, but as we go through here, we'll see it gets closer and closer to it. So now we're gonna start adding some dimensions. Dimensions are another type of constraint. It just allows us to um, apply a physical dimension to that. So I'll switch back to my um, design here. And here is the dimension. And so the dimension, I'm just gonna choose this line. And I think it said I wanted that to be 200 millimeters. So I'll just type in 200 and press enter. And then you see that my whole design scales up. We'll move on to the next step. So I want um, the distance between the two circles here to be 35. I want the length of this leg here to be 70. And I want the length of these three equal ones to all be 50. So let's go back and change those. Let's apply the 50 one first. Come out here and make that 50. And you see the whole thing kind of again um, scales up. I want this length here to be 70. Okay. And then I want this distance between here and here to be 35. Okay, notice how the center circle changed. Um, the size of this outer circle here is fixed by um, these constraints over here. So the fact that these are three equal length lines and the fact that they're all 50, that means that the diameter of this circle is 150. Um, so we don't have to define that. On shape knows that that's what that dimension has to be. 
so one last thing I want to apply a constraint to is these two lines right here. So notice that if I change um, this dimension here, uh, it doesn't necessarily change everything. So let me, let me show you here. If I change that to 250, oops. Notice that the whole thing um, pops out, but this edge right here did not move. This line segment right here did not change shape. So I want to make sure that I have a constraint on that so that I can get that constraint. So I'm just going to apply an equal constraint to these two horizontal lines here. So I'll make this equal, so just this one and this one. And you can see that that kind of inched out there a, a, a smidge. And so if I come back here and change this dimension, if I say I want that to be 250 now, you see the whole design actually shifts over. And so I'll switch that, switch that back to 200. And so this is really the beauty of using um, constraint-based uh, CAD systems. Um, you're really defining the relationships between all the different features, and then that allows you to make um, simple changes that then trickle through the rest of your design. Uh, really, a uh, really powerful tool. All right, I think we're about finished here. There's a couple more pieces of geometry we need to put in here. Um, they're asking us to put a couple of circles in here. The circles, um, we have a construction line that come out of the, the middle of the side here. And so there's a distance of 35 uh, from the middle to the center of the circle and then a diameter of 25 um, on those circles. So the order that you draw these in doesn't really matter. It's more an issue of how you apply the constraints to them. Um, I'm going to start by just um, by drawing the circles. So I'll come back over here to my circle tool and I'll put a circle in there. Um, if I'm careful here, I can actually um, align this and make the constraints line up how I want. So if I come over here and, and click, you see the little midpoint constraint kind of shows up next to my cursor there. That means it's going to go ahead and line up on the midpoint of that. So um, I'm just not, not going to click there. I'm going to hover over it and then drag off to the left. And you see that that little dashed line that shows up there means that the center of my circle is automatically going to be lined up on the midpoint of that segment. So I'll click that. I'll go ahead and click the size there. And I can change the size here if I, if I want. Whoops. I can change the size there if I want, but I'll come back later and add that as a constraint. Okay. I'll do another circle down here. Um, so I got another circle. And uh, looking at my constraints here, it looks like I'm missing a constraint. Uh, I don't have a, an equal on this line. And so you can see that this is actually bigger here. Um, so I want to fix that first. I can fix my equal sign. So I want this and this to be equal size. And I'm not sure why that's not working, but let's try this another way. Um, I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to, oops, the shift key, sorry. And I'm going to click each one of those and pre-select them. And then I'm going to go up here and try to choose the equal on that. And hopefully it will make those all equal. Um, let's see if that works. If I change this to 75, yeah, it does look, it looks like they're all changing. So. Maybe it's just my, my view of it there that didn't, didn't look right, but um, let's change it back to 50, and I think we're set to go. Okay, let's add that second circle in. So again, I'm gonna come down here, hover over this until I see the midpoint. I'm gonna drag to the left, and you see it lines up with that. And if I'm really kind of clever here, I can actually um, pick this, uh, hover over the center of that circle as well, and I can get both of those constraints at once. And so you can see both of those lines and the horizontal line coming out of that and a vertical line coming out of that. And so I'll choose that, place my circle. And then I'm gonna place my equal constraint on this and this, so those will be the same size. And then I'm gonna create a construction line here. So I'll turn on my line, I'll make it a construction line, and I'll go from the center of this to the midpoint over here, the center of this to the midpoint over here, and we should be set to go. Um, I'll throw my dimensions in, 
and it looks like the dimension needs to be 35 from the center of the circle to the edge of the line and a diameter of 25. So I'll add my dimension. I'm going to mention that construction line. And I think I said that was going to be 35. And then I'm going to put a dimension on the circle. And the circle needs to be a diameter of 25. Okay. In my sketch up here, I'm going to turn off those constraints so I can see those dimensions a little bit better. And it looks like we've got things in pretty good shape there. Let's go back and check our instructions here. If we look at step seven, yeah, we've got that. Um, now we just simply have to complete our sketch. And so that's just an easy thing of going back up here and choosing the um, little check mark on there. And so you can see that sketch there. And so that sketch, um, if I see like some errors on it or if it's a different color or if it like has a red or notes or something like that, then I know there may be some issues. Maybe I've got some extra geometry in there. Maybe I've got some things over constrained. Um, so I, I might want to go back and look at that if um, I see any sort of annotation on that sketch. Uh, and then if we look at our last step down here, last step asks us to um, kind of do a check on this. And so this would be the last step of your um, exercise will be to click on that down here in the lower right hand corner of your design. It'll tell you what the area of that, um, that, that piece there is. And then it'll give you a, a little quiz in there to, um, to check and see if you did that correctly. So if I come in here and I, I click on that and you can see down here, it shows me that area and I can use that area to generate the answer for the last quiz there. Okay, so that is all there is to it. Um, when I get this sketch done, um, I can come up here and rename it and then share it with the team or share it with me um, through the dashboard. And uh, then I'll take a look at it and give you some comments and feedback on that. All right, thanks so much. We'll see you next time.